Very special thanks to Affordable Prestige Cars, of course, located in Glastonbury for providing the Jag in this review. And if you've been a long-term fan of beards and cars, chances are you've seen them pop up before if you've watched my other Jaguar reviews. And of course, they are mostly a Jaguar location. They do have plenty of other cars as well, and they can both source cars and of course have an inventory in to begin with. So if you want to check out what they've currently got, or get in contact with them about finding you one, then of course check out their website down in the video description. One of my absolute favourite things that happens quite often, actually, in beards and cars is to compare my pre-existing notion of a certain car to how it actually turns out. And more often than not, I enter with a fairly open slate, hoping for the best. It's not that often that I review a car and don't like it from the off. Last year, there was a very notable exception to that in the form of the Porsche Panamera, which for the longest time I did not like, and then after driving one, it's actually become the car that I want to buy next, after my current Jag. So a pretty big turnaround. I love it when that happens though, because driving something comparing to just talking about it drastically changes your perspective. And that's actually one of the key reasons why I wanted to drive one of these, a Jaguar STR, as it's sometimes called, the S-Type R. Now this model ran from 2002 to 2007. Now of course the S-Type overall was a little bit earlier than that in 1999, but they didn't bring in this version, the higher performance car, until 2002. So that's the kind of market range that you're going to be looking at. Of course it was replaced by my car of the year last year, the XFR, which has way more power, 503, and it's an absolute brute. It's pure modern British muscle, and I loved everything about that car. However, the comparison between the XFR and the STR in this video is more canny than you might think. It's a very valid comparison to make, because even though the newer car, of course, is way faster, etc., it can run rings around this car in many ways, it's still a very important comparison to make because of the type of buyer who should be looking at one or the other, if, for instance, you do like both. The newer car I've heard from multiple people in comments, messages, and even in person, that they find it to be too fast or too powerful, or too brutish, not quite svelte enough, not quite classy or traditional enough for them. And as you might expect, a lot of those people are older gents, more traditional Jag buyers. I find that very interesting, because it is a different kind of Jag. So how then does this one compare? Is this the kind of car that could appeal to the people who don't like the newer one? Well, this one and at least one other option, I believe, is a perfect choice for that kind of buyer. Maybe you're in your later 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s in particular, and the newer one maybe is too playful or too brutish for you. Maybe you want a slightly more traditional experience with the silky smooth ride, the more progressive power delivery rather than just aggressive all the time, and more of like an old school, slightly understated sleeper appearance, if you will, that looks kind of just like any other Jag, but it's way quicker than it seems. There are two that can do that. This one, and I would also say the XJR, which would be my choice of the two, to, to be honest. I drove, of course, the XJ8 already on the channel, absolutely loved it, and I'm very keen to drive the XJR of that one as well. When it comes to this car, though, it was so different to all the other Jags at the time, and even before or after, you can compare it to pretty much any other Jag, and it doesn't quite look anything like them. It's so round and so different to any other Jaguar. It's anything but traditional, and that's why it's sometimes controversial. I am, for full exposure, not a huge fan of the looks. I never have been, but I was much more keen to see how it drives. Now, in terms of the spec, it's got 
the kind of engine you'd expect. Similar to the XKR, I believe in fact the same unit used, a 4.2 litre supercharged V8. It's got an Eaton supercharger. Later on, they were upgraded to having a little bit more power, thanks to the pulley. So you're looking at 400, 420 horsepower, that kind of region. And of course you could tune it even higher if you wanted to. So in other words, about the same kind of power as my Maserati had, the Quattroporte, which is another very accurate comparison to make for some interesting reasons. See, you can buy one of these of a similar age to that Maserati, for a similar price. And now things are getting really interesting because back in the day, that is never a comparison you could have made because I was shocked to find, and you'd think I'd remember this, but I guess not. But back when this car first came out in 2002, this was 47,000 pounds brand new. That sounds insane by today's standards. You'd pay double that price for the equivalent Super Saloon flagship from, for instance, Jag or Mercedes or whoever today. And it's just this crazy comparison of 20 years ago to now in how things have ballooned in price. And of course, in a lot of ways, the newer cars are worth more, but it is crazy to see that kind of difference. However, if you look at it another way and compare this to what my Quattroporte was when that was new in 2005 compared to what I paid for it, well, it lost a whole lot more value. Mine was actually worth somewhere in the region of £100,000 when it was new, being a special order commission model. That's a lot more than the Jag, about double in fact, and yet a used one is about 10 grand, just like one of these would be. So the Jag, in that regard, has actually kept more of its value, and the comparisons carry on. They both have around 4.2 V8s, about 400 horsepower, rear-wheel drive 0-60 to is about the same, 5.2 or so on the Maserati, 5.3 on the Jag, so they're actually pretty good rivals. And you might just want to stick around on the channel because... I might do that video to see exactly how they compare. But speaking of prices, the kind of price range that you should be expecting for one of these actually varies quite a bit. As I said, it's about the same as the Maserati in some cases, like seven and a half, eight, nine, sometimes even 10 grand. This one, for example, is about nine for a much lower mileage car. And when I say lower mileage, it's like 70,000, which might not sound low, but for a car of its age, you know, it's well over a decade old, sometimes like 15 years old. That's not bad at all in terms of mileage. You can, however, find one for as little as four and a half. That is gonna be a very high mileage car though, like 150,000. Not to say that it's a bad idea to buy one, but of course there's always associated an extra risks with a high mileage vehicle that you need to take into account. In terms of how the car feels, of course, handling, performance, and naturally the comfort level, the practicality, the daily driver kind of vibe that you would want from a Jag, well, how does that stack up to what I was expecting and to the other Jags that I've driven? Well, interestingly, it actually wasn't quite as brutish as I was expecting. I thought, to be honest, this was gonna be a fairly rampant Jag. I thought it was gonna be like this wheel spinning, almost Mercedes AMG kind of thing where it's got the constant supercharger whine and the huge torque, being as this does have way more torque than my Maserati, about 400 pound feet with 400 horsepower, great numbers to be working with. I expected it to be much more of a hot rod. It really isn't, to the point where some people might actually be disappointed by it. I could see that. Now, owners or fans of this car will probably say, what are you talking about? How could anyone be disappointed by this car's performance? Well, actually, I think you could be disappointed because it's not as crazy. It's a little bit understated in how it delivers that performance. It's not that loud. In fact, the suspension doesn't even duck and dive under heavy acceleration. It just kind of wafts you forward in a very almost Bentley or Rolls-Royce fashion. That might not surprise you from a Jag, but trust me, I've driven quite a few Jags at this point, and most of them actually feel a lot more explosive than this one does under heavy throttle. I was surprised, actually, by that lack of explosive, brutal power. It's certainly very fast, as you can see from the video, but the way it feels belies that performance. In terms of the comfort and the handling, to move on to that, the handling is smooth and very good. I would actually probably give the edge to the XJ though, to be honest. I personally adore the handling on that car from the mid 2000s. I think it's one of my favorite Jags, in fact, for handling. I mean, this one for what it is, an earlier 2000s, at least to begin with, 1800 kilo Super Saloon, it corners very well. But 
I was actually surprised to say that the XJ actually corners to me in a more youthful manner, which was really surprising for what you'd think of as like a pure old man's jack. It really wasn't, the XJ was super fun. One of the biggest things I can say about this car in a positive sense though is the interior. Now, not everyone will love the look. I actually kind of like that upright, massive oval dash, as I mentioned in the XJ review as well. It's one of kind of the last cars to have an upright dashboard. Most cars have gone with dashes that kind of sweep away from you now, very supercar style. This one, it's very upright, tons of wood, tons of leather. And yes, the seats are every bit as comfortable as they look, much like the suspension and the ride overall, it's super comfortable but the space is amazing in this car. As you can kind of see, the headroom is endless. And now a lot of Jags have fantastic legroom, fantastic headroom, even two-door ones like my XK. It's one of the reasons why I bought one. This goes above and beyond. I reckon you could drive this car if you were six foot eight and you would still be comfortable. It's that big inside. Trunk space is also good, which is unsurprising. The rear space is good, although of course if you're a taller driver and have the seat further back, not so much. But one of the other things I like about the interior is how, especially with this one, which is the facelift, which came around in 2005 midway through production, well technically more toward the end I guess, but they kind of combined very much so the retro and the modern eras of Jag with the old school dash and the leather everywhere and the very 90s appearance, but with little digital displays and a touch screen in the middle of the dash. A touch screen which, incidentally, actually works very well, even by modern standards. There's no lag, you don't have to hit the screen multiple times for it to acknowledge what you've done. It's responsive and it works well. It's simple, just gets the job done, as I often like to say, and I like it. I like the kind of comparison. You have a, a live average miles per gallon and the live fuel range that's still available in the tank, which again, combined with the still existing analog fuel gauge, is a nice juxtaposition between old and new. You can tell that this was the end of an era. And that's kind of my point. To me, this is literally that. It's right on the cusp between old school, older gents jag, and new school, youthful jag. On paper, it sounds much more youthful than it actually feels in practice. And I think older drivers will love to know that. Now, a lot of people who are buying an R model probably won't care too much about economy, but of course, I always like to bring it up just to see how these cars compare. Officially, it's rated at like 15 in the city, 31 on the highway, and an average of 23 miles per gallon. In practice, according to most of the research that I found from various car magazines and outlets, they reported more like 19 or 20 to the gallon overall, which isn't really a surprise. Of course, you should expect that. It's an earlier 2000s V8, fairly heavy rear-wheel drive auto. Of course, a more primitive auto technically by today's standards. But again, I would take the auto in this car over my Maseratis any day. That was one of the main issues with the vehicle. Incidentally, this has a, a ZF six speed as well, no paddles, which again might annoy some people, but again, distinctly older vibe there. And overall, I would have to say that the car does offer a lot to love. It's definitely not the kind of Jag I would ever buy. And that really does go to highlight that this is exactly what you'd expect. It is an older gents Jag. Now, it's interesting because some people might think that's the only way this could have ever turned out. I would actually disagree with that because as I've referenced multiple times, I find the most surprising Jag of the 2000s to be the XJ. The XJ8 that I drove, even without the 400 horsepower engine, was really fun, very playful, super smooth, had the traditional looks, but very much so felt super modern to the point where I actually found it more fun and more engaging than the new car, the 2013 shape. That is a car which I would also recommend keeping an eye out for. So if you're in the market for something like this, an S-Type R, consider the XJR as well. You can sometimes find those a little bit cheaper, about five or six grand, and of course you can pay up around 10 if you want to. 
and they are certainly very good inter-brand rivals. They both have all of the same strong points, but I would just give the edge to the XJR, to be honest, even based on my time with the regular XJ, because if that one already felt that good, of course the R is bound to be even better in terms of adding more acceleration and more performance. Overall, I would say that the verdict on this one is exactly what you'd assume. This is very much so an older gents Jag. Some younger guys would probably like it, but I think for me, it's a little bit too Rolls-Royce, a little bit too Bentley, slightly too smooth, not quite aggressive or muscular enough for my taste in comparison to something like my XKR or the XFR for sure. So if a number of the things that I mentioned in this video sound like you, if they appeal to you, if this is your kind of car that you're in the market for, then by all means check it out, because it pretty much does deliver everything you'd expect and hope that it would. If you are maybe looking for something more youthful, it might not be the car for you, but again, if you get the chance to test drive one, I would still recommend doing so, especially if you could arrange an XJR as well. These are becoming more rare. They're kind of similar to some of the cars that I've owned in the past, such as the Touareg V10, in terms of once people buy these, they tend to be buying them because they love them, so they don't sell them on very quickly. They tend to be purchased and kept, and as a result, they're becoming rare to find. That's always a good sign, because if they're rarer to find, it usually means people are keeping them. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts on the S-Type R, and of course, as I said, stick around on the channel for doubtless more Jag reviews, and potentially even that showdown video between this and my own Maserati from 2005. So of course, if you want to see more Jag reviews, or my other car reviews in general, click the playlist here on screen, and of course stick around on the channel for more in future. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.